and uh, we'll go right into my lesson. Praise the Lord. Psalms 107 and 2. And it's good to see everybody here today. Boy, I've been, been a busy, busy, busy last couple of days, and I haven't had a chance to uh, just uh, check on everybody, but um, I think it's a tragedy. There was a little bit, there was a plane crash, and uh, I had friended with that individual on Facebook just a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, just try to reach out to him. And it's a sad thing that's happened. Uh, Sister Burks and I will take Kinsley to San South, Texas, South Central Texas camp meeting in San Marcos to be with Brother Virgil, Sister Jamie, and Dakota, and then we'll get right back. But Kinsley's already told us she wants to stop at the Kalachi store and get blueberry kalachis and uh, strawberry, and then she wants icy from Bucky's. And Lord Jesus, help me, Lord. All right, so tonight I want to talk to you from this one verse, Psalms 107 and 2. Let the redeemed, let's all say redeemed, redeemed, of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. So tonight I want to speak to you on the characteristics of the redeemed. Amen. The characteristics of the redeemed. So Lord bless you and be seated. Amen. Um, <laughs> you know, a lot of times you hear preachers say, high five somebody. I grew up in the era of the Three Stooges, and I was like, just poke their eye out. <laughs> so, amen. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Sister Carla does a good job. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, you do the great. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. This is called verbal power. Verbal power. Characteristics of the redeemed. One thing that the uh, redeemed needs to understand, if you're redeemed of the Lord, <clears throat> and the word redeemed means to buy back, <clears throat> to buy back. That's a really neat thought, uh, especially those of us that have had what you call seller's remorse. You ever had a vehicle that you sold and later on you wish, man, I, I wish I'd had it back. Um, there was an individual that was bragging to my middle son, and let me just clear the air. I can only take so much bragging. <laughs> I, was, I know what poor tastes like. I've been raised, I, know, I understand what poor is. So I really don't like a lot of bragging. And so, but some people brag, 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 brag. And this individual was bragging to my middle son, Nathan, about they, had, they bought a truck. And they went to telling all the special detail to this truck. And I, uh, they lost me. I mean, I've driven Fords, I've driven Chevrolets, uh, I've driven Dodge and Toyota. Never drove an International. Uh, but but I've, I've driven all kinds of vehicles. Uh, whichever one can get me from here to there is fine with me, okay? I've driven them all. I don't have a lot of bad to say about many of them, but I, I have. I've, I've driven them. And I like vehicles. I've had good ones. I've had bad ones. I've had old ones. I've had new ones. Um, <clears throat> but this individual was bragging to my middle son about how this vehicle, they saw it, and it just bragged, 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 bragged. And when they got through bragging about this new vehicle, I told my son when we were walking away, I said, that old diesel truck you had, that old one model diesel truck that you had, that uh, <clears throat> just... Um, three-quarter ton diesel, that old diesel, that they just quit making the motor for it. I said, why didn't you tell him you could have hooked onto his new truck and drug him all over the county? Well, Dad, I didn't want to hurt his I said, you know, it's a fact. You could have, that new truck he's got and all that bragging, you could have hooked on, just, smoke could have been billowing, but you would have drug him, and I would have paid to see it. Well, anyway, <clears throat> seller's remorse is when you sell something and later on you wish you had it back. That's seller's remorse. That's why the Bible is very clear on by the truth, and sell it not. You're going to wish you had. You're going to wish you had it back. Buy the truth and sell it not. So seller's remorse is when you have a, something that you sell, or a, a property, or some possession you sell, and later on you wish you had it back. But letting the redeemer, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. It does matter. It does matter what you say. You hear me? It does matter what comes out of your mouth. It does matter. So the redeemed, if you're going to have a characteristic of the redeemed, first thing you've got to do is have verbal power. Let the redeemed of the Lord 
say so. I'm just saying it's easy to cancel your blessings with just snide remarks. It's easy to cancel your, your blessings. Well, Pastor, I just can't take no more. Well, I'm telling you, the devil heard that too. Saying that stuff, you just open seasoned yourself. You just put a target right there, and you're going, here it comes. Don't say that stuff. Well, I just don't know if I can take Well, live through it. Take a little bit more. It'll be all right in a few days. It'll get better. Another thing I hear people say, and I'm talking about redeemed people say, I'm just unworthy. I'm just so unworthy. Well, first of all, that creates little to no expectations. Whatever's going on with that system, it needs to stop. So, amen. Don't cancel your blessings with little to no, little to none expectations. Now, <clears throat> having high expectations is for your future and for your family's future. So to say I'm unworthy means I'm saying I'm not worthy to be part of the body of Christ. Now we talk about, look at me, I, I know we got feedback going on. But I really want to give to you what the Lord's given to me. To say that I am part of the body of Christ, let me say it like this, that you are a member of, of Jesus Christ's body. So to say, I'm just so unworthy, God made you a part of the body. So you're just saying this part, or that part is not worthy. Whatever. Can you dial anything down? That's, that's just, it's not. Sister Burke said it was. She was pointing right at you. <laughs> you feeling better? No pressure, Sean, no pressure. You're okay. Now, God added you to his body, and it's not a sinful body. However, it can all be positional. Where do you stand in the body of Christ? It is all positional. Where do you stand in the body of Christ? Are we picking up that sound up there as well? Going back to your maintenance work, sister. I'm sorry. <laughs> that is my new joke with Sister Latrice. I'm trying to give her all the jobs I can give her around here. I think it got worse. So just bear with us. I know we're on live stream, but just bear with us. We'll get there. Of all times, I need you to take a picture. That's when I needed you to take a picture, right then. Is it that, is it that valve? Water valve. Amazing. The troubled waters of baptistry. Trouble in my service. The next thing it's not good to say is, it's not good to speak downwardly over the blessings of God. You should never speak negative over the blessings of God. It is God's will to bless you on every turn. You're, you're not hearing me. It is God's will to bless you on every turn. That is the word of God. That's the will of God. He'll never stop doing good. Pastor, if it's God's will, if it's God's will, I'll, I'll, just, I'll, I'll get delivered over addictions. Believe me, it's God's will. It's God's will. It's the promises of God. Deliverance is the promises of God. Well, Pastor, I, I, you know, if it's God's will, I'll be delivered over the spirit of depression. It's the will of God that that spirit be bound and dealt with. Because it's easy to do in times like this. It's easy when, when finances are tough. It's easy when, when there's not much money left after you paid for the fuel in your vehicle. I put 60 bucks in my truck. My truck's a six-cylinder. I put $60 in it. It didn't fill it up. I parked it at the house. And then when the kids had to go to Houston, you know, Tim had to drive them to Houston. I just said, well, let me, hold that, let me know how that goes for you. He didn't want to talk about it. Uh, thank God for a church van. But I know what it's like to, after you, you, you buy your groceries and you pay the 
put gas in your vehicle. Or maybe you have to put on a new tire. Uh, Alex, I appreciate him picking up a part of a tire on the side of the road here that somebody's recap come right off. and I appreciate that. But after you've had a few costs, then it's eat into... You had discretionary funds at one time, but now you don't. It's tough times. And when there's not much money left and much groceries left, and it's pretty, it's pretty thin, I'm telling you, don't open the door to a spirit of depression. We're the people of God, and I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. No matter what economy, God will take care of His redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So, God's Word reveals His will. So if you know His Word, you'll know His will. God, if it's just God's Word, if it's God's will, I'll get past this depression. Yeah, it's God's will. Get on past it. So don't speak down. Specific plans, as far as specific plans, you've got to pray in the Holy Ghost for specific plans. You've got to pray. In, the Word of God's not going to tell you to buy a green car. It's not going to tell you to buy a brown car. It's not. You're going to have to pray in the Holy Ghost for the Lord to, to guide you on a vehicle that's going to be worth your money, that's going to be worth your time, that's going to be economical enough for you to keep it on the road until it's paid off. That's where you pray in the Holy Ghost. Lord, open a door. God, lead me. Show me what's best. But His Word is not, that's not what His Word is for. I hear people sometimes say, Lord, just give me strength to endure. First of all, it's always a test. And that's why the scripture says, He that endureth to the end, same shall be saved. So yeah, it's the will of God. You need strength to endure. Pastor, the struggle is real. Let me remind you, you're in covenant with God. You're in covenant with God. The struggle is real, but so is the covenant with God. You're in a blood-bought, redeemed, Jesus-named covenant with Almighty God. He died for your redemption. He bought you, praise God, with His precious blood. So, the struggle is real. So is the covenant. The just shall live by faith. Well, if we could just see miracles like we did 50 years ago. The just shall live by faith. Well, if somebody will just give me a word, if somebody just can just give me a word, the just shall live by faith. I know what it's like to fall into that, that, that little category of I need a word from God. and then, But you still got to live by faith while you're waiting on a word from God. The just shall live by faith. I like a fresh word from God like anybody else, but the just shall live by faith. Now, if we're going to live by faith, then you've got to maintenance your faith. And in maintenance in your faith, it can't be a deal where, Pastor, we... Um, we need our electric bill paid this month. Well, we paid it last month and the one month before that. And if, it's, if the money's there, we'll help you. But during summer times, generally, air conditioning 9,000 square feet kind of does a little bit of that right there. I mean, it has for 27 years gone up during July and August. So if there's anything left, we'll be glad to help you. But, but I, do, I do notice last month and the month before and the month before. So I think that if you have a job and you've got an income, you might want to live within your means. You need to plan on a higher electric bill for July and 104 degree days for the next 10 days. Plan on it. Work on that. It's going to happen. The Lord is the Lord the Lord wants you to maintenance your faith and not live beyond your means. So if you'll get your eyes off the world, these guys that act like they've got plenty of money to spend on Friday and Saturday night and everything's going great, they're just in debt. You need to get your eyes off the world and get your eyes right on the Word of God. Amen. If you honor God with your substance, then listen to me. If you honor God with your substance, then walk in honor. If you honor God with your substance, walk in honor. Why can you walk in God honor? Because God is a God of honor. God said, honor your father and mother and I'll add days to your life. So God is a God of honor. Walk in honor. Honor God with your substance and then walk in honor. Because God is a God of honor. So let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Say financial blessings are coming my way because I'm walking with a God of honor. They're always going to come to me. You know why? The scripture says he gives seed to the sower. What does the sower do? This is, 
In the Bible days, they took it out of that bag and they did. For years, we, we, paid, we liked radio. If you bought in the radio, you bought in something called broadcast. It was called a radio broadcast. And if, you take, if you're going to take seed out of a bag and throw it, that's called broadcasting. I know this is, this is really fast right here, but some of us have had to plant. That's called broadcasting. When you take that seed out of the bag and start throwing it, you're broadcasting. And that's the way it was with radio programs. They were broadcasting. And God blessed a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of radio broad, broadcast programs because they were going where we couldn't get a missionary to go. They were going to where we couldn't put a man and a woman on a field. These radio programs were getting through the airwaves. So it is. God gives seed to the sower. Hallelujah. As long as we're giving and working and getting this gospel everywhere we can get. If they can get a signal, we'll send our live stream. If, if, if they can get a man, we'll send one of our young men. We'll send. We'll broadcast. But God will give seed to the sower. So we always want to be in that category of giving and making sure the gospel is being preached. So God rewards the diligent. Let's take a look at that. Uh, Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Let's take a read here. Let's look. It shall come to pass that thou shalt hearken diligently. Let's all say diligently. To the voice of the Lord thy God. That word diligent is there for a reason. Um. Diligent is there for a reason. It is, the, it is the key to this verse. Diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Observe, do all the, His commandments which I commanded thee this day. That the Lord thy God will set, on thee, set thee on high above all the nations. That's called favor. Your obedience level, your obedience level is directly tied to the favor of God. When people say, I'm, I'm walking in the favor of God, well, I, I, need, I need to know that your ob obedience level should match the favor of God. If you'll obey, if you'll just do, if you'll just be, if you'll stay, if you'll just honor God, if you'll let the redeemed of the Lord say so, if you'll have the characteristics of the... You'll walk in favor, but you've got to be diligent. You can't... I'll tell you what you can't do. You can't decide, you know what, I'm going through something, I'll stay home for six months. That's not diligence. That is, you're playing into the hand of your own weakness is what you're doing. Diligence is, you know what, it's been a lot of pressure. I'm going through some struggles. Some bad things have happened, but it isn't God's fault, and I'm not mad at God, and I'll be there every chance I can. That's the favor of God is directly tied to obedience. And I understand that many of our people are having to work, 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 work. I understand. If you have a job and you've got a good job, take care of that. Do everything you got to do to take care of that. Now's not the time to be walking away from a job. Avoid anything that has the characteristics of sin. Here we go. 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. Got a question. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? That you have of God? God's the giver of the Holy Ghost? And you're not your own. Let's all, we're talking about the characteristics of the redeemed. Say it. I'm not my own. That was a little bit slim. Let's say it. I'm not my own. I'm a child of God. I'm his son or daughter. Amen. If you're a, son, if you're a man, you're a son. If you're a woman, you're a daughter. Went to a funeral one time. The guy got up and sang, I'm only, as a man, I'm only human. I'm just a woman. I had to kind of hold, uh, okay. He got the words. He didn't quite add to her. Philippians 4 and 8. <laughs> Something needed to change. Finally, brethren, what sort of things are true, what sort of things are honest, what sort of things are just, what sort of things are pure, what sort of things are lovely, what sort of things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, so think on these things. I've dealt with your body, and now you're, you're thinking. What is my point? You've got to ask yourself, what am I doing? Follow me. What am I doing that will expose me to deeper sin? What am I doing that will expose me to deeper sin? Deeper sin usually has worse environments. 
When I was growing up, they had what you call previews to the movies. They're called trailers now. Am I, am I okay? Yeah, when I was growing up, they had previews. You could see the preview to a movie. And a lot of times the preview was, went right along with the movie. But I've noticed that uh, sometimes with trailers, it's a little different. Seem like the trailer shows one thing and then the movie's different. Okay, I'm not a movie fiend, but I have noticed. When I was coming up, the trailer, the, the preview was right along with it. But, you know, but now the trailer can kind of lead you one direction and then the movie has a whole other twist to it. It is just different. Often it is somewhat misleading. And I've noticed that also with individual YouTubes. How some people can put on one thing in YouTube, but when you meet them in real life, it's a whole other misleading story right there. That's all misleading. So if you're going to be the redeemed of the Lord, why don't you be everything God wants you to be? You don't have to be anything else but what God wants you to be. Avoid anything that pollutes your spirit, even if you've got to modify the things in your life. Let's take a look at this. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Let's look at verse 2. Be not conformed to what? This world. Remember me saying that be careful what you think because it can lead you into deeper sin. Be not but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's the important issue right there. And again, I know we got young people in here, but young people, you need to hear this. One wrong street drug. And it could be a battle for your mind. A hard battle for your mind. And when I see our young people, I see a whole lot of potential. I see a lot of ability. When I, I, see, when I see young people... Brother Kendall, I see kids, I think there's a whole bunch of tomorrows. Boy, they can do something. If we can just get this going in the right direction, there's a lot of good things they can do. I want them to live that blessed life. But the devil would love for them to get one hit off the wrong stuff. And you know what? We'll be leading them by the hand. It's, a, it's a not a pretty sight. So, be not renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable unto God, the perfect will of God. One more verse I want us to look at. I'm talking about characteristics of the redeemed. Characteristics of the redeemed. Let's look at Romans 6, 12, and 13. Let not sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it and the lust thereof. There's a reason that verse is there. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead. You ever come by a casket? We've had our fair share of funerals. But you ever come by a casket and they raise up and say, I need one more cigarette. I've never walked by a casket and they raise up and say, Hey, I like your tie. They're dead to this world. They're part of another world. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so when you die out to this world as your members as instruments of righteousness unto God, I'm going somewhere with this. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 8. Sometimes things may not be sin to you, but they're sin to somebody else. That's why it says you've got to lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily beset you. And you're going to have to deal with that yourself. Romans, I mean, 1 Corinthians 8. But meat commendeth us not to God. That's talking about rabbi, rabbi steaks. If we eat, or we're not, bet, neither if we don't. It's saying that, so you're saying you're a vegetarian because you're spiritual. And he's saying that don't even matter. Has nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. I'm probably going to get tagged by Facebook. Verse 9. Take heed lest by any means this liberty... Now we've got another issue. It's not vegetarian anymore. It is the liberty. 
The liberty of what you do. Become a stumbling block, notice, of them that are weak. Now, here's where we got to pay attention. Years ago, we had a man that was coming to church. Well, let me tell you, he was basically attending church. He, was, he never was what he needed to be. But he found everything wrong. All the way down to me wearing a watch. If I, if I wore a watch, he wouldn't hardly stay for church. Because he said, that is ornamental jewelry. I said, we don't have a clock in this church. I got to know what time it is. It had, it's not ornamental, it's functional. I, I need my watch. And you know what? For years I didn't wear a watch because I thought, well, he's going to show up at church and he's going to give let me. Let me put that man not in the strong category of watches are sin and I'm trying to lead you on straight and narrow. He wasn't in the strong category. He's in the weak. He's in the weak. If a watch offends you, you're going to have to get stronger than that. Now, if it is... If it's a Rolex with about 20 diamonds in it, you need to put it in my office. Because you don't need that. <laughs> Rex Pie, that was good. Put it in my office so I can watch it. That's funny. All right, let's go. Next verse. Here we go. Let's go back to 10. For if any man see thee which hath knowledge, you're sitting at meat, you're eating meat, which was our first issue. But now there's, it's complicated. You're sitting there with idols. Shall not the conscience of him that is weak. Don't think they're strong just because they're offended at everything. That's not strong. That is weak. And God help us if we're offended. You will not walk in the blessings of God if you're offended over every little old thing. You're going to have to, you've got to grow yourself past that. Which is weak. We'll be emboldened to eat those things which are, now. There are some things we have got to pay attention on. Years ago, and some of your old timers would remember this. Many years ago when there was a lot of communion, some of the churches did communion wine. Now, communion wine, if it is done right, communion wine is a, it is a dry wine. It's bitter. It is, it's not your Mogan, David, Merlot, and all that stuff. Get that out of your mind. Communion wine is bitter if it's done right. It's, it's bitter. And it, but well, just grape juice is not. <laughs> it's rather delicious. And so years ago, we had to have, the, the, in the 80s, the church I worked in, went to communion, they had two lines because there's people that believed the fruit of the vine was, was wine. And I believed fruit of the vine was Welch's, which was only made in like the 1800s. Something don't add up there, okay. Some of the people that believed in taking wine for communion believed that we were wrong for taking Welch's because it was man-made. You know what? I didn't need to get in that fight. All I needed was communion. I wasn't in that for a gun battle. I just needed to examine myself and get in the faith and make sure I was right with God. Communion is a good time for you to start over. It is a starting over time. If you have to have the communion wine and I have to buy it for you, I promise to God it won't have an ounce of sugar in it. It will be bitter. You're getting it dry. You won't be sitting around. You know, and I've got friends that they'll do Passover for four or five hours. And it includes, you know, they partake of this glass and that glass. Well, to me, it still needs to be, it's not entertainment. It's not there to get you to feel in no pain. That's not what it's for. It is to get your soul right with God. So one time I was mentioning it. If you're here and you have to have communion wine, then talk to me. And one of the men came in off and said, I was an alcoholic. And please promise me that I won't have to walk by that table uh, with that communion wine and, and walk by. He said, I will struggle going by that because I was an alcoholic. Well, I'm going to tell you, that's a category where we need to pay attention here. I don't need, you know, most of our temptations are mental. Most of them are on the inside for the most part. But when you put something physical in somebody's hand, it is, it is mental and physical, and the war is on, buddy. So I didn't, uh, I've never done communion wine. If you want to take communion wine, then you just, God bless you. I don't know what to say. 
But you can't do that with somebody that's a recovering alcoholic. You can't even drink NyQuil in front of those guys. I'm just... That's the way it is. Clean yourself up. Recognize that there are weaker Christians. And, and I'm not going to walk around here. Back in the day, there's this dude called Kung Fu. And Kung Fu had to walk around on rice paper. <laughs> that was part of his training. Well, I'm not going to walk around like Kung Fu on rice paper. We've got to get strong enough to say, you know what, That's, I'm going to get past that battle. I'm going to get over that battle. I'm going to be better. I'm going to win this battle. The, let the characteristics of the redeemed are you win the battles. All right. Recognize the weaker Christian. Well, pastor, you need to accept me the way I am. Well, let's talk about that. You just accept me the way I am. Well, I, you know, I did it. I, I, um, for years, for pilgrims on, on uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays, I would do orientation. And I would always have to start off by saying, you know what, you're in a, you're in a food processing plant. You've got to wear a hairnet in the food processing. If you're determined to wear a beard, you're going to wear a beard net. It's a hairnet on your beard. Well, I don't want to. Well, then you're not going to get this job. They're not going to let you walk in that plant unless you've got a hairnet on and a beard net, if you want a beard net. Well, I think they ought to take, because, you know, some of, God forgive me, but some of those men kind of look proud of their hair. Everybody, when they had them curls going on back in. Well, I don't want to put all this up in there. Yeah, you're going to put it up there. If you want that job and you want a paycheck every week, you're going to put all that up in that hairnet. Well, you need to accept me like I am. Well, I'll take you like you are, but if you're going to get this job, you're going to wear a hairnet. And there's more to it than that. If you, if you wear bobby pins, you're going to take them out because that can't be caught in the chicken. And in some of the places where you cut chicken, you can't wear perfume or cologne because it gets absorbed in the meat. And yeah, you're going to smell like the rest of them. You're going to smell like a chicken plant. Like... So that idea of accept me the way I am, if you, if you, you're going to have to do better if you're going to take this job. And you get paid every week. And you're, if, you, if that's what you want, you've got to make some changes. Well, I think you ought to, if you're going to live for God, you're going to have to get into the category of the redeemed of the Lord say so. And the characteristics of the redeemed are, Lord, take my life and make something good out of this mess I've made of myself. That's what the redeemed is. Modify your behavior. Modify your own behavior in order to move forward. Modify. And I, I tell them, no, you can't go in that plant with them knives. We're going to give you knives to cut chicken, but you can't, wear, you can't be taking that and you've been stabbing people. You're going to have to put it on the side. <laughs> Molting. You know, molting, if you've been raised around animals, you know what molting is. Chickens are the ugliest thing in the world when they start molting. My God. All the feathers fall off. They look like they've been, been you know, through the ringer. You, you see chickens molting. It's awful. It's pitiful. You know, and I've, I've had to talk with folks. Well, you hadn't been in church in a while. What's going on? Well, I'm molting. What do you mean you're molting? Well, I went and bought about 50 little, you know, rented 50 videos so I could stay at home and molt. I don't think that's the right plan for you. Because every time I've seen a chicken go through molting, they don't look so good. They have to go, it's almost like you want to spray them down with a little something. Don't get into this deal, well, I'm struggling, so I think I'll just go through a molting, and I'll just shut the door, and I'll lock away. A lot of times, people, that don't, they don't come out of that as good as they did, as what they would. It don't work like you think it's going to work. Molting is not your answer. Put your shoulder to the wheel and keep it there. Keep on moving forward. Keep moving forward. A life that is blessed by the King of God. So bless, yield, wean yourself from the world. You cannot be offended, like I said, and be effective all at the same time. Misplaced priorities. Characteristics of the redeemed is they've got priority. Priority is God. God is the giver of life. We can't make it one breath without God. Everything we do is centered around God. You see, Lot had a problem with his priorities. What are you going to do? I'm going to the well-watered plains of Sodom and Gomorrah. I'm, well, they, the, the problem wasn't the well-watered plains. The problem was that priority that man had going on. His priorities were, I'm going to leave the blessings of God, and I'm going to pitch my tent towards Sodom. That's a priority issue. And then, you know what? He lost everything. I imagine after about five years that he probably thought, boy, I wish I had all that to do over again. So be, be faithful during the struggle. Put your faith to work. Your faith needs to be working.
Faith is a, it's a working action word. You need, faith needs to be moving. Uh, don't let your faith get stopped. Keep your faith working. Ro- At the end of your sleeves are two hands. I, I need to get that noise going back in. Sean had to jump behind the bathroom. You act like you. I said at the end of your sleeves are two hands. Get your faith to working. Put your faith to work. Well, I love God. I just don't want to go to church. It's like being married and never go home. See how well that works for you. Your clothes will be out there in the yard. All the neighbors will be looking at you. Okay. Oh, well, praise the Lord. All right. So if you love God, you'll submit to His Word. I'm a very resourceful man. But I'm not going to get into this deal of putting back food for two or three years. I'm not. If we ever get to that point, I'll let you know. But we're not there yet. In 2020, when the pandemic hit, we sent out a text to this entire church. Everybody that's on our list saying, we've got word in th- that 30 minutes after the, the news conference, there will be a run on grocery stores. And we sent that text to the church. Got some feedback. You better get what you need right now because there's going to be a run on. I didn't know there would be a run on toilet tissue for an upper respiratory. Who saw that coming? I'm listening. <laughs> that was funny. First Peter 1, 18 through 20. If you're a child of God, get your faith back. I said get your faith back. Go dig it back up, knock the dust off, get your faith back. For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold, your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, as a lamb without blemish and without spot. The next verse you need to, you, always, you should hang on to it. Who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world. Everything is about Jesus Christ. Saving us. Everything is about Him and the church. So, being saved qualifies you to be able to say something. And if you're going to say something in the redeemed of the Lord, then you're probably going to go through something. And when you're going through something, let God work on you. God had already, according to this verse right here, God already planned to buy you back. Redeemed you from the foundation of the world. So spend time with the real characteristic. The key word to characteristic is character. In the same article I was reading that was giving the the uh, issue with previews and trailers, saying that the, the, it's the the idea is misleading on trailers. It also gave the idea that. A lot of times, somebody has to play a character. Especially if the character is passed, if the real character is passed on, somebody has to play that character. And it cited Jamie Foxx playing uh, Ray Charles. I think, if my memory serves me right. And the point was that the man playing the character had to spend time with the character. In order to manifest their, not be them, but manifest their characteristics, they had to spend time with the character. So, he did. He spent time with Ray Charles. If the life of Jesus Christ is really in you, praise God, then you're not doing yourself any good by putting pictures on of you in a tavern. That's the wrong character you're trying to display. That's not the character. That's not the character. If you're really trying to display Jesus Christ, then the pictures of uh, of you on social media sitting with both hands and both feet is not the right character. I wish we had more pictures on Facebook of people getting the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. Come on. I wish we had, the world needs to see the character of God through us. Jesus is not going to come back and walk down these aisles. It's going to be us. 
we're Jesus Christ in this world. Praise God. Beauty is always attracted to images. You're here on Wednesday. You're on Sunday. But God is here all the time. So while you're here and He's here, the goal is don't let Him pass you by. Our goal is to intersect with Him when we come to church. This is not the place to, to work out your crossword puzzles. It's the place to intersect your problems with God. Pastor, Pastor, I don't want to bring my problems to, to church. Bring your problems to church. I brought Kinsley. Some of y'all got mad at that thing. So let him buy back his possession. The redeemed of the Lord says so. So can you say so when you intersect your time with his redemption? Being redeemed is not just to celebrate us. Being redeemed should check you. It is here to check us. Um, this is an action. Intersecting with God is an action for a purpose. So we should focus on our purpose. Redeemed means we reach beyond, we, are, we have been reached beyond our brokenness. When we've been redeemed, what are the characteristics of the redeemed? God reached us beyond our brokenness and still gave us a purpose. And if God's going to reach you while you're broken, that means He's got to fix you on the inside. The good part of living for God, a characteristic of the redeemed is we got fixed on the inside. God made us better than what we were when He found us. He made us right on the inside. So we should be better. So it's responsibility. Take responsibility. The characteristic of the redeemed is they take responsibility. You know it's the responsible, part, responsible party that always pays? It is the responsible party. The responsible party knows how to sacrifice. When I say that you are, the, for you to take responsibility, that means you're in control of what he's in control of. When God works in your life, it is subject to your actions. It can, it can be better, it can be worse. When God puts something in your life, it's in your hands. So you're in control of what he's in control of. So be positive, speak positive, speak into somebody's life. Brother Elrod, when I, was, uh, when I was driving one time from Pampa to Amarillo, I passed something called a sinkhole. It's the oddest thing. I Googled it because they didn't have Google back then. We didn't even have cell phones. A sinkhole, by definition, is an aquifer underneath the ground that dried up. And so they ground it. You, you, you didn't buy 30 acres of Hades. You bought 30 acres of good property. Just underneath there was the Ogallala aquifer that goes from Nebraska to the Panhandle. And that part dried up. And so the sinkhole began to just sink right there because what was a river under the ground went dry. And it dried up. So if you're here and you're always willing, or if you're watching on social media and you're always willing to give somebody a piece of your mind, you need to let that dry up. And you, if, you want that, if you want a river flowing on the inside, learn to give encouraging words to somebody. Encourage them. Bill Wright used to say, Bill Wright used to tell me, all they need is encouragement. I said, encouragement, nothing. They, they're running from the law. They need to be arrested. Bill Wright would shake his head. No, they just need encouragement. You know, after two or three, he'd kind of get upset. One time I upset him, he'd walk right out of my house. He got, we were friends, but he'd just get up and walk out. If he didn't like what I was saying, he wouldn't argue with me. He'd just get up and walk out. They just need encouragement. I said, they're terrible. They need to go to jail. He'd get up and walk out. They just need encouragement. Well, praise God, encouragement is so much better than a sinkhole. Encouragement is a flowing aquifer river. So it's a characteristic of the redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I'm here to tell you, you can make it from Sunday to Sunday. I'm here to tell you, you can win the battle that you're in. Praise God, I'm here to tell you, you can be bought back if you're going, if you're going down for the last time. God will reach you. Hallelujah. We're the redeemed of the Lord.
Aren't you glad we're the redeemed of the Lord? Stand, come on, stand and give the Lord praise. Let's keep that hand clap going. We're the redeemed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. The characteristics of the redeemed. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And God blesses those that are diligent. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands. Praise God. Hallelujah. Lord, we honor you. We glorify you. We bless you. Hallelujah. Praise God. 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 Amen. A few announcements. If you'll put up on the bulletin or on our announcement, sister. Um,